Welcome to segment 2 of lecture 48. We are going to discuss or introduce CSTR with heat effects. Although the CSTR is well mixed and the temperature is uniform throughout the reaction vessel, these conditions do not mean that the reaction is carried out isothermally. Isothermal operation occurs when the feed temperature is identical to the temperature of the fluid inside the CSTR. And this is very reasonable because we all know that isothermal means when T equals T naught. Under steady state operation, T in an ideal CSTR does not change and is uniform throughout the reactor. So why do we need to worry about energy balance? So my, you might be thinking, we have, we know that the temperature inside the CSTR is constant, so it's the same everywhere. It's the same, doesn't change with time. So why do we need to worry about energy balance? Uh, any idea? Well, first to calculate the heat required to maintain the reactor at this desired temperature. So I would like to know how much heat I should remove in order for the CSTR to operate, for example, at 100 degrees C. Because otherwise, if I don't remove this amount of heat, the temperature will go above. It will operate maybe at 150 degrees C, and I don't want this to happen. Maybe to calculate T that will be reached within the reactor for a given Q. For example, adiabatically, Q equal to zero. Now I want to see if I operate the CSTR adiabatically, what would be T inside the reactor compared to T naught? Okay, need calculation using energy balance. In conclusion, we need the energy balance to calculate two variables out of these three, X, V, T, should one is specified. So if I specify one of them, then I'll need to calculate the other two. For instance, if I specify the volume, I'll need to calculate x and t. Tamam. So I see, well, this is my CSTR volume, and this is my condition, okay, feed temperature and so on, molar flow rate, and what else? I have the kinetic data, I have the thermodynamic data, okay, so now I'll need to calculate what would be the conversion, right, x. And what would be the temperature inside the CSTR compared to T naught? And now that we have two unknowns, we need two equations. What are these two equations? The design equation, which is the mole balance, and the energy balance. Okay. The general energy balance for steady state operation. You know that for a steady state operation, accumulation would be zero. So here we go equals input minus output through heat minus output minus input through work minus output minus input through the energy or the enthalpy associated to the mass coming in or leaving out and coming in. Okay, so here we can rearrange to get this simple equation simple energy balance equation if we expand delta t how do we expand it well we decided that we want to expand it through the following first we will heat heat the feed heat the feed do you see heat t naught to t the feed theta i we're heating the feed from t naught to T and then run the reaction at T. Run the reaction at T. Okay. And of course, we need to multiply by the number of moles reacted. Equals Q dot minus the shaft work. Well, here we have some nice, good looking CSTRs which are with jacketed for heat exchange. And there's one which is not colored. I left it for you to color if you want. طيب, let's go back to the energy balance. For CSTR, can you replace FA0 times X 
with another term can we replace this for c star yes we can if we look at the design equation remember the design equation for uh, c star v equals f a naught over minus r a times x so this term f a naught times x equals v times minus r a or minus r a times v so yes we can do this okay so the resultant equation will look somewhere something like this okay what do we call this equation any idea well this equation is mole balance this equation is energy balance so this equation will be called the combined energy and material balance type for isothermal operation with given x a negligible shaft work describe q dot above by right. so let's say let's say you want to operate isothermally so that means this term goes to zero and this is negligible so and we know the value of f a naught we know the value of x okay so how would you describe the q dot in this equation what does q dot equal well basically q dot is the amount of heat let's say it's an exothermic reaction it's the amount of heat that needs to be removed from the reactor in order for it to operate isothermally in order for t inside the reactor to equal t naught Okay, that's the amount of heat or the total heat rate tamam? it's the total heat transfer rate that should be removed tamam? that should be removed in order for the reactor to operate isothermally okay how do we calculate q dot that can be actually exchanged with the reactor so we said q dot is the amount of heat that should be or the rate at which heat should be removed from the reactor but in reality in reality the reality will not listen to your should okay the reality the amount of heat that will be exchanged depend on your design so how do we calculate q dot that can we actually exchange with the reactor well it all depends on the heat transfer rate right so we go to the heat transfer course by so we can calculate this q dot by calculating the achievable heat transfer rate so how do we calculate it from this equation q dot equals u times a times delta t log mean and you all guys know what is delta t log mean in this case it's a bit easier for you because you have one temperature inside the reactor and then for the heat exchanger the temperature outside you have two temperatures for example ta1 and ta2 type in case of high coolant flow rate in terms of high coolant flow rate then ta1 will equal TA2, right? So the, the temperature at the exit of the jacket will equal, will almost equal the temperature in the entrance of the jacket. Come on, and we have now one temperature, TA. So therefore the above equation reduces to the following, Q dot equals U times A times TA minus T. It's always the temperature outside minus the temperature inside. Type. How do you calculate the M dot C, the mass flow rate of the coolant required to maintain a given delta T C? Okay, so let's say you're taking your coolant from the lake or from the sea or from the river, okay, at T A1, and you want to use it, but you don't want T A2 to exceed, for example, 50 degrees C. So you are taking it at 25 degrees C and you don't want it to exceed 50 degrees C, so that delta TC is around 25 degrees C. So you want to maintain this. How do we calculate how much the mass flow rate should be in order to maintain this? Well, 
basically we will run energy balance or we'll apply energy balance on the coolant come on here and of course this will be zero so you have q dot for the coolant should equal the delta h for the coolant how do you calculate delta h from the definition of delta h right it is mcp delta t and all of this is r for the coolant okay so we have quite a good number of equations that we know what they mean and where they're coming from right okay so q transferred from the reactor q transferred from the reactor from the knowledge of heat transfer can be calculated by q dot equals ua delta t log mean and you know how to write delta t log mean okay and then we have q transferred to the coolant Q transferred to the coolant. How do we know? By measuring the temperature going into the jacket and measure the temperature of the coolant leaving the jacket. So this will give us a good indication of how much Q was absorbed by the coolant. So these are equal, right? These are equal. The amount of Q removed from the reactor where is it going? Going into the coolant. Okay, so this will enable us to equate these two equations and calculate the TA2. So if M dot C, M dot C, so this is the mass flow rate of the coolant, and TA1 are specified. So again, I'm taking, I'm taking the coolant from the C or from the river at a given flow rate, introducing it to the reactor. And I know it's temperature, I know TA1. One would ask, one would ask, what would be TA2, right? I don't know, How, what would be TA2? What would be the temperature of the coolant leaving the jacket? Well, you say, well, it depends on how much heat is transferred to the coolant, right? How much heat is transferred to the coolant? So it depends on this Q dot. Ua delta T log mean. However, the delta T log mean depends on TA2. So, see, so they are coupled equations because they both depend on each other. Okay, so TA2, again, TA2 depends on how much heat transferred to the coolant. But how much heat transferred to the coolant depends on TA2. So they are coupled. We need to solve these two equations together. So we equate these two equations together and we calculate TA2. How do we do this? Well, simply we say Q dot reactor equals minus Q dot coolant, right? Because the Q dot reactor, for example, if it's losing heat, it will be negative. And the heat gained by the coolant is positive. So we put a negative before it. So we have similar sign. Now they are equal. Okay, therefore, we can solve for TA2. And when we solve for TA2, we get this equation, a third useful equation, or maybe a fourth useful equation. Okay, ways to specify the sizing of a C star. Well, basically, basically here we have three major cases. What are these major cases? First, case one, x is specified what do we need to calculate we need to calculate t and v so basically i'm saying well uh, i need this reaction to proceed to x of 75 percent okay so we need to design the reactor right we need to design the reactor. we need to calculate the required v in order to achieve the desired x but also also i'll need to calculate x a t because T depends on X as well. And this is an easy way. It requires sequential calculation. So if X is specified, I can calculate T through the energy balance. Because if the reaction was exothermic, the higher the X, the more energy released from the reaction, the higher the temperature. Now that you have temperature, you can use it in Arrhenius equation to calculate K. Right? The rate constant. If you have, of course... The reaction is reversible. You can also use it to calculate Kc, the equilibrium constant. 
And now that you have K and X, you can calculate the rate of reaction. Once you have the rate of reaction and you already have X, you can calculate the required volume through the design equation, through the material balance. Okay, then we have case number two. T is a specified in this case. T is a specified. So I'm saying, well, uh, T naught is this much, and then T should not go above 60 degrees C. Why is that? Because if T goes above 60 degrees C, I will start having some side reactions, side undesired reactions. I don't want this. And if T was below 60 degrees C, then the rate of reaction will be very slow. So I want to operate at temperature of 60 degrees C. Come on. So what would be the resulting conversion? Right? And what would be the reactor volume? Again, sequential calculation, which is easy. We have T. We can calculate the corresponding X through the energy balance. Right? Because T, in compared to T naught, reflects how much energy was released from the reaction, okay? Or if it was endothermic, how much heat absorbed, how much heat absorbed by the reaction. Tamam. Okay. Then we go to Arrhenius equation or Van Van Hoff equation to calculate K or Kc. Now that we have K and we calculated X already, we can calculate the rate of reaction. Once we have the rate of reaction, tamam. And we have X, we can use them both in a material balance and a design equation to calculate the volume. Well, we have the last case, which is slightly more challenging compared to case one and two. What is this case? Well, V is specified, V is specified. So imagine in case one or two, in case one or two, we calculated the volume to be for instance 4043 liter and we go to the market we want this reactor say oh sorry we don't have this volume however we have either 4000 or 4500 so which one do you want we'll say okay let me recalculate if my volume was 4000 instead of 4045 liter what would be if my volume was 4,000 liters. What would be the resulting X and T? Tamam. Here, Shabab, you will need to use both the energy balance and material balance together. So you have to do simultaneous calculation. So you solve energy balance and material balance simultaneously. Tamam. How do we do this? Well, we go to the material balance. We solve for X. So we have X and B. Then we go for the energy balance and we also solve for X. We have X EB. And both equations will be function of temperature. So we equate them together and we find T by using a solver or graphically. And then we substitute T in one of these equations, either X and B or X EB. And then we calculate the resulting X. Okay, so these were the general cases that we can face when we have CSTR with heat effects. In next lecture, we can apply this and to design one of the reactors. See you soon. See you soon.